Um, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the code for my multiplayer Pong game. Um, so these are the three uh, files we were given um, and my game is where most of the code takes place. Uh, so in the .h file, um, as you can see, I've uh, got like mixer, TTF, things for images, fonts, and I've got sounds as well. Um, so we got the game data structure, which was already pre-written to get the position, positional information of the player and the ball from the server. Um, and I made a score one to get the scores as well. I created a player class because there are quite a lot of player variables and because there's two of them I didn't want to duplicate the code so it made sense to have a class for them. Um, so I've got numerous um, things for the images like the surface and texture and the rect so I can display the player um, as well as the scores and whether or not they're taken so I can lock other clients out so only one um, client can be a player. Uh, there's the particle class with the different um, particle properties and then the main my game section um, obviously I'm using friend class for for play on my game so they can share private variables with each other without having to expose them um, so I declared players I've got network messages uh, to send to the server to uh, tell them like they received a heartbeat um, if they're if player one or two is ready, and requests to be to be player one or two if they're if they've been currently taken, um, and, and if the player loses or not, and then it goes on to the start screen, which displays uh, text, um, the visuals such as the ball. Um, we've got an array of surfaces and textures because the background transitions between different ones, um, so it was a lot uh, more. Uh, concise and uh, to put them into an array to save space. Um, then we've got the audio fonts and the end screen and then these are the different functions. Uh, so on receive, send, uh, input, update and render were all um, already there for us and implemented. Uh, so I created an init function uh, to initiate uh, the various libraries I'm using um, and then obviously a yeah, game start end and so on which I'll show you. So onto the main file uh, we use constructor to create the snowstorm particle system uh, it's similar to the lecture that I followed um, but I reversed engineered and used random so they spawn anywhere on the screen. Uh, the in init function initiates all the uh, files, uh, asset files um, and the different libraries so you can see I'm doing all the surfaces and textures for most of the assets in this part. Um, it then calls game start which uh, creates the start screen and lets the player select uh, so it's a while loop because if they I want it to be so they wait on the start screen until they can be either player one or two. So if they choose the wrong number or the player's already taken, it will re keep cycling around and only quit once the player is chosen and send a message to the server. Um, and then the on receive is where all the messages from the server are gathered. So this was already created and I made the scores in a similar way um, and put the sound effects when the score happens. Uh, so I've got various ones here that change the state of the variables to say if player one or two is taken and who wins and so on. Uh, the inputs are locked depending on who is player one and who is player two. Uh, the update we change the position of the images and, um, and we update the score every frame. Um, this is the timer for the background. Um, particle movement updates and making sure they don't go off screen. Um, and then in the rendering, we, we render everything. So if the if the game is ended, it, it will stay in this game ender loop. Uh, so it stays on the end screen until a new player is picked. Um, otherwise, we render everything else, including the different background depending on what um, value the timer is on. Um, 
um, also rendering through the particles. And then the game end screen is, is quite similar to the start screen, and depending if you want to lose or display something else. And then Terminate just sends a message to the server, and then clean up to free up all the memory from all the different pointers used throughout the code. Um, main is all pre-written, but um, some things were slightly tweaked. Uh, for example, Terminate is called when escape is pressed before the game stops running. Um, the init function is called before the main game loop happens, so before update and render happens. Um, and then clean up is called just before the game is deleted. Uh, so that's the client side. Server side, um, we got extra network messages. So all of these are ones that are sent over to the client um, alongside the pre-written ones. And then the rest of the code is done in here. So numerous variables, we get the balls, uh, velocity, so we can make it static when the game starts or is paused. Um, the delay star is to do with the uh, delay f uh, thread, the countdown at the start. Um, the readying of players to see if the game can start. The heartbeat and, and heartbeat array that clicks gets all the connections, and it um, yeah, if it sends a heartbeat message to the client um, every five seconds. And anyone that responds gets removed from the array, and anyone that's left in the array gets uh, terminated. Um, then we've got connection player one, player two, so we can keep track of what connection is what um, and their scores. So we've got two threads. We've got the delay thread here, um, which is called in the update section um, when the game starts and it will broadcast different numbers uh, with a, a sleep in between, so it counts down in seconds, and then it starts the game, and this stops, uh, while the heartbeat thread runs until the server stops because it's alive, um, while it's alive and the thread doesn't die. So uh, yeah, so it will send, like I said before, collect all the connections, sleep for five seconds and delete any that are still in it. Um, so the main, the main bulk of the code is in the update, and on receive method. So the update here, we uh, store the ball's velocity if it's above zero, so then we can use it later when we um, unpause. Um, when when there are so, uh, connections and every and player one and two are ready, then the match is started. Um, for the first time, it does the delay and starts the heartbeat, and then after that, it uh, just continues to check to see if the score is more than four. Um, if the ball is paused then it changes the ball's velocity to what we stored just now. Um, and then when and then the scores are reset once the game ends. And this is just to see if we're ready or not and to send uh, messages to, uh, to the client to let them know. Uh, send them over the game data and then in on receive as uh, where all the messages happen. So when when a player is ready, it sets the uh, relevant variable to true and sets them as that connection, whether it's player one or two. Um, termination, when they press the escape key, it sets them to false, so the game will stop running, uh, lets the scores reset, freezes the ball, uh, changes the connection to null, so someone else can be player one or two, um, and then sends the message out to the uh, other clients and terminates that specific client. Um, when a different client requests the V1, it checks to see if the connection is null, um, so they've been terminated, and if it has, then they were accepted or they're denied. And then we've got the removal code here uh, to remove the connection if the heartbeat is received.